Isaiah chapter 5 and with Matthew 21 33 to 44 John 15 1 and now will I sing now will I sing what the second advent that we began last time in chapter 4 verses 2 through 6 Israel is not singing today they're not going to be singing during the uh, the tribulation period they weren't singing in Babylon according to the Psalms but they hung their harps on the trees in the Babylon well, it was a song of the land how can we oh but when the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the second advent and they acknowledge him as the Messiah as the one of God now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. Now that's Israel. Now chapter 5, the fifth book of the Bible is Deuteronomy. The last book that Moses writes to Israel before they go into the land under Joshua. Jesus spoke the parable. He says, uh, there was a certain man that went off in the far country, built a vineyard, hedged it about. And then with that, he says, you know, they killed the prophets. He says, I got but one son, I'll send to him. And they took him out of the vineyard and killed him. So the vineyard is likened to the nation of Israel. It's a place where you, you grow grapes and you make wine. And he fenced it. He put a fence about it, Jesus said. So Jesus is quoting from Isaiah chapter 5. They knew exactly what he was saying. They knew exactly where the places were in the Bible. And he knew the Bible. He, he was the one that wrote it. And gathered out the stones thereof. It's protection from animals. And he built the defense with the stones. And you don't need stones in a vineyard to clear the ground. And planted it with the choicest vine. He chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the twelve tribes. And out of that he chose Judah. There are people that God chooses, yet there's a free will. The nation of Israel is choice of all nations. And built a tower in the midst of it, in the middle of it. Here he builds a tower. I believe in Genesis, the garden of Eden, I believe that there was, I forget which tree, the tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil was spoken of in the midst of it. Here in the midst of this, this vineyard is a tower, a lookout for protection. Here comes the enemy. Here comes some wild animals. You know, the heathen are spoken of as dogs, as wolves, as foxes. Jesus said, go tell that fox. And built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press there to squeeze, squish, squanger, whatever you want to say, the grapes into wine. A drink of grape juice, a new wine. And he, God, looked that it should bring forth grapes. Well, what do you expect from a vineyard? You're not going to expect tomatoes. What do you expect the fruit from modern Bible? Christianity? When you cut Christ out of it? What do you expect fruit from uh, cults? When they change the word of God for their own devious plans and ideas. And it brought forth wild grapes the wrong type James 317 
Can you bring, you know, good water out of salt water? Can you bring berries? Out? I forget what he mentioned for plants there. But listen. It brought forth wild grapes is contrary to natural or nature. They went against the, the planter, the farmer. They went against God. It wasn't God that made them wild grapes. It was their own doing. He planted the choices for He went through all the people, all the nations. Right, this is the one I want. And they turned around and told Samuel, well, we want a king like the nation. We want to be likened to them. We want their gods. We just read in Numbers. Jeremiah 2.21, I don't know if I gave that reference. Matthew 21.33. Romans 11.21. See, you can be planted in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and come out as the wrong fruit. The day that Demas left, his tree was shook and all the fruit came down and rotted. Still a Christian, still a tree, still a vine. I wonder if God had to clip that vine could totally off and bring it to death. And now, all inhabitants of Jerusalem, to, uh, to, uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah tells you exactly who he's talking to. The men of Judah, judge, judge not least you be judged. All right, you men of Jerusalem, you men of Judah, you see these wild grapes? Why? Tell me why these are wild grapes. I didn't plant wild grapes. Wasn't there another parable Jesus said he, that he went out and planted uh, wheat? And the enemy came along and sold in tares. Wait a minute. And somebody could, well, I believe one of the angels, somebody came. Didn't we plant the good seed? Yeah, we did. Where did this tares come from? That's the enemy that done it. So Jesus tells you a parable of the vineyard. Then he turns around and tells you, you're of Satan. He spent John 8, 44 to the religious leaders. You are of your father, the, the, the devil, of Satan. You know, life began from the wrong fruit. Satan tempted Eve to take the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She had another tree. You realize if she had taken the tree of life, God had to, would have stopped them from going to the other tree. He had to. He stopped them from the tree of life because they, they acknowledged the tree of, of, of good and evil. And God did not step in and say, you know, put stop lights and stop signs and, and, and put a fence about the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil like he did here. He didn't stop it. Now in chapter 5 of Isaiah, he tries to stop it. He puts a fence of protection. Kept all the animals out. Kept the Gentiles out. And they produce the wrong grapes. God takes a drink of that of that, uh, that 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 grape juice and not what I wanted. And Jesus, his first miracle is he turns water into wine. And the people of the of the, of the wedding party went, "Wow, woohoo! This stuff is delicious." With the parables I just told you that Jesus told, <clears throat> and that, you know, usually you have the best wine first, and then you bring out that which is cheap and, and grody and all that watered down wine. But here you brought the, the, the best wine last. 
He tells us here, hey, you brought forth wild grapes. You didn't taste that good. He says, Judge, you don't taste good in God. We're in a church age today that makes God sick. He spews us out, uh, out of his mouth because we're, we're lukewarm. He brought forth wild graves, oh, now inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah. Judge, judge yourselves, people. Paul says to Corinthians, I judge myself. You gotta find yourself as a sinner. Never mind other people. You gotta put your sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never mind other people. Don't worry about Boab. Don't worry about Amalek. Don't worry about the other nations. What about you, Jerusalem? In the mouth of God, you taste different. You dress different. You act different. I pray you, this is God speaking, betwixt me and my vineyard, what happened? God tells Jerusalem Judah what happened? Between you and the, vine and the vineyard and me, what happened? What went wrong? What could have been done more to my vineyard, God speaking? Come on, tell me. David, that fair you have a bash. I would give you more women. I'd give you it all. If that wasn't enough, I'd give you more. That I have not done in it. Notice the word in. God is working in the vineyard. He's not out there in, in some, you know, far away, distant galaxy and blah, 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 blah. He's in the vineyard. He's working it. He's sending Isaiah. Isn't Isaiah in the, in the vineyard? It's written to Jerusalem and, and Judah. He's in the vineyard. God is speaking to him. God ain't done. I don't know what if you call Isaiah fertilizer, bug spray, whatever what you call it, but God sends Isaiah into it to you gotta do something because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Wherefore, when I looked, when God looked, that it should bring forth grapes. God expects the nation of Israel to produce grapes. Brought it forth wild grapes. Who is responsible? Their Christians are expected to produce fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. And if you don't match those nine fruits, who, who, who went wrong? God go wrong? What could have been done more in the Christian life? You've been given eternal life. You've been given eternal security. You've been given eternal home. You've given eternal words of hope to tell lost people. Why aren't you producing that fruit? That place that marriage feast that Jesus changed the water to wine was all those people were to be tasting of the greatness of Israel they were to be the light of all the world about you know if Israel had done right had Israel done everything God expected them to do do you know Incas and Native Americans would eventually come to Jerusalem they'd be like who are these people we come from the other side of the world. Oh, you mean they're not like those other Gentiles think the world is flat? No, one of your prophets said the world is round. Oh, okay. 
They were to be the light of the entire world. That that which is known and that that which was not known. That's our job today now, to send missionaries out in all the world. That was to be Israel's job. With the grapes, with the wine. But something went wrong. Now, I don't know what the difference between wild and, and the choice vine. But there is a difference, God says. How did you become wild being inside of a fence? Being watched over by, the, by a tower? By your planter being in the garden? And yes, it can happen to a Christian. Our problem, according to, the, to Revelation chapter 4, is not that we don't taste. Our temperature is wrong. We're either too cold, lukewarm, but God wants us hot. Now, I know he says, I'd rather be cold and hot. And listen, you don't want to serve me and be sick. Go ahead, just be cold. I don't want you walking both ways, but we're to be hot. On fire, coffee, tea, all the places in the Bible let you with the drink. We're not Israel was not to be an intoxicating grape juice of asp and snake. Deuteronomy says it wasn't to be a drink that bit you. The Bible says wine rejoices God over there in the Psalms, right here. God, take that drink of the wine. Oh, I love what you guys are doing. I love everything about you. Thanks for drink. <clears throat> well, what did you guys do to this? Nehemiah. Who was Nehemiah? Well, he was a cupbearer to the king. What did you do to my grape text? You press. In the cup in front of me. Well, I just went out. You know, I didn't go all the way up to the village. I just stopped by and saw the grapes inside the row. Uh, Nehemiah well, lost his neck. Uh, how is it that one of the people that God sends back from the captivity of Babylon, he sends a cup bearer? That stood in the king's presence. In the presence of God, Israel is to be great, great Jews. I'm glad I said that right. As Jesus Christ made great, great Jews. I'm glad I said that right. And somehow it became wild grapes. You want to do a study in the Bible, the grapes of Jerusalem, wild and, and natural. Let's go on. And now, go. Go. That's a funny looking word. Go. Go to. I, God, will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. Uh oh. See, I don't know what I can say. I don't know what to say about Isaiah and Jeremiah. I don't know if they're, if they're fertilizing, I don't know if they're weeding. I don't know if they're a rake, a pruning, but in the vineyard, these prophets that God sent in the vineyard, they have a specific purpose for the plants to produce what God wants them to do before God does judgment. And before God does judgment, he's going to apply, he's going to give you a warning. And the warning here is you are wild grapes. Now, if you continue to be wild grapes and don't change yourself, this is what I'm going to do. I, God, will take away the hedge thereof. Uh oh, there goes the protection. Here is the warning of judgment. 
If you don't get the taste that I expect from you, if you don't live like I expect you to do, I'm going to remove that hedge. You know what's great when you serve God? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I may get persecution, but I still have the hedge of God about me. Whatever comes my way is being godly in Christ. God is in order of it. And nothing can happen to me if I'm living godly in Christ. The persecution will not go as far as God will not allow it to happen. But it's going to happen. Do you really think that it would be really for a grape to be stepped on? Do you think, I mean, if a grape had a feeling, do you think he would be lovely to be squished? <laughs> but look what he produces. You step on a grape. Step, 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 step. And look what comes out. A nice drink. Jesus speaks about a parable, you know, with the vine. He goes in there, God goes in there and starts clipping it. Ow! Ooh! <laughs> God, they're that hurt! That, that, vine, that, that vine's a sucker. All it does is steal the nutrients from the roots. We don't need that. Ow! God, they're hurt! That's another sucker plant. God, that one had a fruit on it. Yeah, but that fruit you know, was entangled with, with the world and all that, and... That's not going to taste right. Listen, when God goes through our life and cuts and turns the fire up and steps on us and all that, ow, 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 ooh, ow. But you know what? What comes out the best? When you plant a tomato plant, if you let that thing grow wild, you ain't going to get tomato plants. You'll get very few tomatoes. But if you go in there and start sucking and taking out the suckers and taking out that which branch is not that healthy and, and cut the leaves are turning yellow and, and cut in there and cut in there, you're going to get some good tomatoes. Some tomatoes you've got to pick off the vine and throw it away. You know what? That, that one, it's, it's done its growth. I want this big, big plunk one. Sometimes it hurts for God to make us proper. There are some injuries when you break your bone that a doctor has got to hurt you to put that bone back. There are some things in your life that God's got to do that hurts. Well, oh, what comes out? I'll take away the hedge thereof. You don't want God to remove the protection then you'll be under every animal attack and every attack of the world. Animals are smart. If they know there's a way they can get into that they're not supposed to get into, they will get in that way and get in and do what they need to do. And break down the wall thereof. Protection, care, and it shall be trodden down. Luke twenty one twenty four. You go look that verse up. The provision is gone. The protection is gone. The care is. You think God's going to be in it in verse four? There are churches out there today. They are doing things that they don't taste good in, in, in God. And God has removed the, the, the hedge. He has removed the wall thereof. And he's trotted it down. And the worldly and sinful things that they are doing in that church, they still think God is in it. And they still pray to God to bless what they're doing. And God look at that head. I ain't there. I look down. Listen, the, the door is open to anybody and everybody. The hedge is gone. The wall is down. So we got sodomites sitting in churches today. Hey, God's blessing us. Really? You know you're unclean. You know you're an abomination. And you know you're sitting in the vineyard. You know that Israel had the places of worship. They had the sodomites there making their AIDS quilt. You do know that's in the Bible?
Nothing new under the sun. Don't think that old oh, churches law and sodomites in them. That's nothing new. Israel was doing it. All we're doing is following Israel. And you know what happened with Israel? They got the boot. You know what's going to happen to America? She's going to get the boot. But you know America's going to get it worse because we can read about Judah and Jerusalem. Judah and Jerusalem didn't have nothing to read. They had the prophets, but they could read about no nation that went against God and were destroyed. We can go back in the Old Testament read about two, read about the nation, and we can see that they got destroyed from them. We ought to know better by the Word of God. You think what God did in the end result for Judah and Jerusalem with Nebuchadnezzar? Do you think he's just going to pass off America and say, "Oh, you, you're America." You you want me to bless you and all that, and and in, in me you trust and all. You think really? When you read the last church age, of Revelation chapter four, when you read about Paul when he speaks about the last days for the church, itchy ears. There's no protection in five anymore. Go over Jerusalem today and see what see what it is. They're all everyone's walking around Jerusalem. The Jews and the dogs are walking around in Jerusalem. And where their temple is is a small G O D. You think God's in Jerusalem? The Roman Catholics running around telling you, oh, this is where Jesus was born in a cave. I didn't read cave. Where'd you get that? I, God, and I will lay it waste. Dump. Now, for a Christian, Hebrews 6, 7, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, and 3, 13. It shall not be pruned. Oh, I'll leave you alone. I won't hurt you no more. I won't cut that stuff out of your life. And you'll produce no fruit. See, you can't have the fruit of the spirit of love if you got hate. God's got to cut that hate out. Joy. Well, you can't have joy if you got that cancer inside you. Now, I'm not talking about cancer as a disease. I'm talking about something that's ruined the joy between you and God. That cancer has, whatever it is, called sin. That's why you don't have joy, because you've got that thing, is, it's against you and me. you got to cut it out. Oh, you don't want me to cut it out? Fine, go ahead. Go ahead, do it your way. Fine, go ahead. And you'll be the subject to every cult. You'll be the subject to anything that comes along. And I ain't going to protect you. I ain't going to prune you. And when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you watch it all burn up. That's wood, hay, or stubble. You know what stubble is? It's junk. You know what wood is? You don't want wood in a vineyard. You want grapes. You don't want wood as a Christian. You want fruit. I can give you all the apple tree wood you want, but no, God wants apples. Fruit. Too many Christians are oaks. I've got enough nuts already. I don't want fruit. I don't want nuts. World full of nuts. Give me fruit. Be a fruit bearing Christian. You know, you know what it takes to be a fruit-bearing Christian? God's got to prune you. An apple tree takes much pruning. And you've got to know which branches to cut and which branches not to cut and when to cut them. I grew up around apple orchards. And you see a big pile around every tree in the springtime. That sure wasn't what the tree looked like when winter came. And you can't just cut any branch. And you know the most weirdest tree in ever to look at is after it's been pruned is, a, is an apple tree. That thing looks spooky. And it don't look much. 
But you wait till the harvest time, you see the branches and the leaves and the apples. But I won't prune you. Nor day. What's that? Run to, run to the parable of Jesus. I came to this fig tree and it didn't have produced figs all these years. Oh, cut it down. Well, well, sir, yes. Let me dig it about and dung it. That's fertilization. Fertil fertilizer. God's got to put some fertilizer in your life. Fertilizers, some fertilizers stink. It's messy to work with. We got a, we got a, a, a fertilizer called Miracle Grow. Oh no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the King James 16:11 Bible. The more you put your your life into the King James Bible and read it and all that, the more it produce and more it will grow and more great things. You'll get great rewards. Imagine your Creator. At the, at the end of your judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, as you go into it, and he picks up the gold, the silver, and the precious stone. Pick them up. I don't know what he's going to do with them. But somehow, he reaches over somehow, and I don't know, I don't want to say what, tell you what he's going to do. But somehow, that gold, silver, and precious stone becomes a crown. And when you give Christ the fruit, he gives you a crown. How about that? But you're not going to get a crown if you're not pruning. You're not going to get a crown if you don't get fertilized. I don't know where to go with fertilizer. There's got to be a mechanism with that somewhere. But do you know the snow brings fertilization? Snow has nitrogen. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow if you come to God. So confession your sins brings snow cleanness and brings fertilization. And by the way, God's fertilization is all natural. It's not synthetic. But there shall come up briars and thorns. You don't want them. They cut. They rip. That's what they gave Jesus Christ. The thorns that God gave up Israel that came upon, came upon Christ's head were from the were from the vineyard. You can't do nothing. You can't eat briars and thorns. They hurt. They're non-fruit plants. You know what you do with briars and thorns, the Bible says? You throw them in a fire and they crackle. You want to have fun sometimes. You go take a, a, a thorny bushes, you cut them up, and you throw them in a campfire, and you listen to the little thorns go pop, pop. No, nice. It's, it's beautiful to watch and pop. But you're not going to say, all right, children, here's a bowl of thorns. Enjoy yourself. No. I'm always amazed how you give your loved one a rose with a thorn. You know in the millennium there's no thorn. There's no briar. They're gone. They are under the curse. I will also command the clouds and El Nemo will have no more rain. That's not what that says. I will also, the weathermen will also command, command the clouds with their charts and, and their things and say there's no rain. That's not what it says. I will also command the clouds, God saying, I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain upon it. Uh-oh, dry up drought. God's in charge of the weather? Would it be great? Here we are live at your news. We're turning to the weathermen. Whether man's on his knees, Lord God, please give us this nation for us, us help us to, for me to give the proper weather for the people out there to do what they need to do at the right time. That'd be wonderful to see, but you don't see it. We're having uh, Siberian, Siberian snow. God's causing all the snow. You haven't read your Bible. You know why God's doing it? We're having, we're having blizzards after blizzards after blizzards. 
Well, Al Gore says we're having a heat wave, a wonderful heat wave. It's global warming, and God says, ha, <laughs> Gabriel, yes, Lord, turn that thermostat a little bit down. All the way. All the way. Show them about a heat warning. Global warming turn right. I'll tell you. You know what's going to happen next? They're going to, oh, we got all these things, we got all these things. They're, they're going to, you know, give away why all this thing science and all, and then God's going to say, okay, fine, well, he's going to turn all the way back up. And then, oh, oh, the cold, and now we're having a heat wave again. Listen. Why don't you just read the Bible? God's in charge of the rain. And you do not want a vineyard with no rain. If you were to cut the water off in Las Vegas, because it's all piped into Las Vegas, it ain't natural. You look at a map that tells you the climate and, and temperatures of, of the world, and you'll see a spot in Nevada and Arizona, it'll be bright as bright as you can get it. Something happened in Arizona and, and, and Nevada. Why God don't give them rain in there anymore. In a place next to it called Death Valley. Something happened there. But what I'm trying to say is, if you were to cut the water being brought in, in, in Las Vegas, you don't have to worry about gambling no more in, in Las Vegas. Everyone will leave because there's nothing to drink. There's no clouds or rains in the land. So what happened to the Jews? They're all over the world. They're not in Jerusalem. So the Lord's not there. There's no protection. There's no care. There's no provision. There's no water. Have you seen pictures of Jerusalem? Wait till you see it in the millennium. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Look at that. You run to Matthew 21. There it is. And what, what was their remark? They thought he spoke the parable of them. Yes, he did. Isaiah just told you. Almost 800 years before it happened. If not longer. They ought to run to the Isaiah scroll and say, okay, I guess, I don't know, they didn't have chapter 5, but get, get us that part of the scroll where he talks about the vineyard. And say, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Yes, Jesus was right. He was speaking about us. And we don't want to stop being wild grapes. Thank you very much. Jesus offered them. A way to repent by Isaiah chapter 5. And they did not want to repent. They kept on going. And Jesus said, okay, fine. You want to keep on being wild grapes? I'll go to the cross. I'll send the apostles into the land. You still reject it? You wait to 70 AD. Weep now, doors. Don't weep now for me. You still want to be wild grapes? You wait to see what Adolf Hitler will do to you. You still want to be wild grapes? You wait to see what the Antichrist will do with you. Is God all done with Israel? Is he finished with them? Verse 1, now will I sing of my beloved. No, he's not done. He's got to run them through trials and tribulations and all kinds of troubles and problems. He's a lily of the valley. Remember when we studied that? And there was a, there was a little tiny... I don't think I'm going to find it. Let me go back here. Song of Solomon. Something interesting that we read about. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 2. As the lily... Among thorns.
That's what Israel is in, in the eyes of God. You know, it also speaks about an apple tree in Song of Solomon. You know what it's going to take for God to get that lily wrapped around the curse of the world and all the thorns? You know what the thorns is in the parable of the sower? It's the cares and riches of the world. You know, in order to do that, you got to receive the mark in the tribulation. You know, Adolf Hitler put all the economical worries and troubles of, of Germany on the Jew. And then, when the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ, Now will I sing to my beloved a song, my beloved touching his vineyard. Imagine what that vineyard is going to look like in the millennium. Bright, shiny. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do I hear one more story in the Bible? Do I hear one more story that, that, that spies went in the land and brought these big, fat grapes that two men had to carry? Put them on the scale at the cash register at the, at the grocery store. They say we're bigger than watermelons. That's what God wanted of Israel. That's exactly what he wanted. And you know what he gets today? No rain. You know what you get from, from a vineyard when you have no rain? You get little raisins hanging from the thing. The dead. It's swiveled up. That's what you get. Big grapes. Rebel against God. Little raisin. He and son makes raisins. Now, raisins are good. They got iron. They're good. Watch out for iron. But it's nothing big, fat, great. And the men of Judah, his pleasant plan. And he, God, look for judgment. You're the judge yourself. You ought to look at your life and see where you need to repent and have God cut it away. God, yes, plan. Something's growing over here. I, 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 I'm sorry, Lord, but I don't want it. I'm tired of that. All right, send down the clippers. Not all flowers produce fruit. A dandelion in your lawn is a is a burden. It's a weed. Now I like it because I hate grass. But people who take care of their their lawn and put money in their lawn, they don't want to see a dandelion. And if you want to get them angry, you take a dandelion that's white and you blow the seeds toward their guard their, their grass. They don't get angry with you. Um, but Behold, oppression. For righteousness, instead of righteousness, behold a cry. Disappointment. Now, do you really want to disappoint God? Do you really want to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, the judgment seat of Christ, and it's all burnt up? Do you really want... God expects you. Lord Jesus Christ expects something from you. And if you don't do it, it's a disappointment to God and Jesus Christ. Mr. Billy Sunday, please step up. Yes, sir, Lord. Look at all these people, these families that you helped and got alcohol out of their life and got saved. Wow. Look at that. That's good. Thank you, Lord, for the, for the food. Mr. Bob Jones, Sr. Yes, sir, Lord. Step up. These people that you trained in the ministry and helped them to go out. Yes, Lord. Mr. Joe Smith, please step up. I ain't talking about the morning. I'm talking about this is the common name. Mr. Joe Smith, this is all the... Where's the people that you led to the Lord? Oh, Lord, I, 
Here's my ashes. Here's my bucket of ashes. You don't want the ashes. What am I going to do with ashes? I don't want ashes from you. I want fruit. You couldn't take that tree and make paper and give it out as one gospel track? You know, paper comes from trees. Paper is a fruit of a tree. Money is paper. Wrong fruit. Gee, uh, let me tell you the three things that God expects from all people. You know what God expects from everybody? He expects everybody to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a disappointment when he has to throw people into hell. You know that? You think God's really going to enjoy throwing people in hell? He didn't, he, Jesus said, Jesus who is God said, hell was made for the angels and for Satan. Didn't say humans. As soon as Adam sinned, God stepped on the scene. He said, where would you do it? He wanted Adam to repent. For Israel, he wanted them to produce the finest grape juice of all the world. That marriage ceremonies and, and families and all the world will sip and rejoice. I didn't want you to have the cup of judgment. Let my son take that later. Christian. He wants fruit from you. He expects fruit. Now, I don't know if the crowns are pre-made. Or if they show up after we're judged. And what I mean by that is, all right, there's gold, gold, it's gold, silver, precious stone. The Lord produces a crown out of that. Maybe he does. I don't know. Or if the crown is already pre-made and you got nothing. Action. He takes that crown. Can't give it to you. But not producing fruit, I do know. You will not get a crown. Wear a crown. Wear a crown. Wear a bright and shiny crown. And when the battle's over, we should wear a crown. Yes, we should wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Or you could probably sing, In New Jerusalem, I wish I had Rogaine. For all my agonies and my pains. God expects an expectation from you. Fruit. Juice. Something. And if you don't, if you don't want to, He ain't going to fertilize you. He ain't going to clip you. He ain't going to take care of you. Now think about when the foxes come running into that, that vineyard. It says foxes, when they, they just, just by rubbing against the plants, they destroy it. Oh, Lord, the foxes are here. Yeah, so what? Cheers. Lord, the birds are stealing the thing. So what? Cheers. You didn't want me to help you. Lord, well, here's our fruit. A bunch of raisins. That's all you could do. A bunch of raisins. Do you know who got that land of Kyrgyz? Barnenia? Caleb got it. He met that but He goes in there. He's a giant. He goes in there. He's 85 years old. I'm going to kick some butt. And I'm going to sit down and have some meat grapes. 
Honey, bring me a grape and a steak knife. Thank you. He gives his daughter a lantern. Daughter, can, I, can I have the springs too? Yes, dear. You can have the upper and the knee. I got so much water here. I'll give you both the springs. 85 years old, and that guy's up there kicking giant's butts. And what? Ten of the spies never made it? Where are their fruit? You ever wonder who carried that fruit to Moses? If you were, if you were to ask me on a guess, I would believe Caleb and uh, Joshua carried the fruit. I, I, I would assume. And I could be wrong on that. You see those two? You see those two working together? They, they come back to Moses. They got grape juice all over their body. We had more, but we enjoyed it in a way. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. I shall live, even though David had written that yet. <laughs> you know they love the Lord. You know they enjoyed the Lord, and look at the fruit. Meanwhile, Israel is getting tired of manna. Oh, we're sick of this. Manna, manna bread, manna cake, manna roast beef, manna pot roast, manna. Uh, I'm getting sick. You never heard Joshua and Caleb complain? You know, the manna stopped with Joshua. Can you imagine Joshua? Oh, Lord, I'd rather have your bread. I'd rather have the bread of pan. Come on, Lord. Can you give me a little extra? Can I go in there and get the jar and have a little of the manna that. Joshua and Caleb wanted from God. And you know what their fruit was? They got in the land and they got a possession. 